Welcome to Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. Thank you for joining us today. We have with us today a guest that's never been on one of our programs and yet is no stranger to our ministry. He speaks at our conferences. He produces a lot of DVDs that we have shared and many of you have become familiar with. I'm speaking of Doc Marquis. And I said we truly have a marquee name <laughs> guest. So that you uh, do. <laughs> we are glad to have you. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. This, as you pointed out, this is my first time here. Yeah, in the studio. Yeah. And you are a favorite at our conferences, and uh, quite a uh, interesting and colorful character, I well might add. We have very forgiving people out there. Ah, uh, but your own, and we may have some other shows we do with you to explore the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. um, you've done a number of. Uh, you know, presentations on that and on the giants uh, in America yes. and the findings. And it's not quite even the mainstream for those areas, some of the things that your awareness of the occult brings out. So well, we're, we're glad to. Yeah, well, with the giants, um, how I learned my knowledge of the ancient giants and such was in the Illuminati. Okay. Well, yeah. And, and as it is, sometime next year, I'll be going out into the field and just living in that area till we uncover what I think will be a particular um, cave where the remains of a number of ancient giants are located. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to talking with you more about that. Right now, though, you've got your uh, first full-length book coming to publication. Yes. It'll be out in October by Charisma House, The Final Rapture. Mm -hmm. Now, Doc, I uh, have written the foreword for this book, so I do know the contents a little bit, but for our viewers, just tell us, What's different about your take? It's nothing new to you, but people look at that and say they've never thought of that before in quite well, that way. No. Y um, how this began, it was um, at one of your conferences that you just spoke mm -hmm. of. See, what I um, will do sometimes before I put a DVD together, I'll take part of the presentation and I'll test drive it, see what the audience thinks of it, you know. And I recall... In particular, if you remember, it was at one of the presentations where I was mm -hmm. doing um, this particular presentation, and afterwards, now remember, to me, this is old hat now. I've been teaching this way on the rapture for about 25, 30 years almost now. And afterwards, I had more people come up to me, pastors, teachers, preachers, lay people, all asking me, where did you learn this? Who taught you this? Why aren't we being taught this from behind the pulpit, so on and so forth? And I'm standing there scratching my head trying to figure this out because I just thought this was common knowledge, the way you teach it. Right. And what had happened, how this actually, this became a book. I was doing it yet again, another um, c um, conference. And you know the section that they always um, block off, usually Thursday evening, so just the speakers can, you know, start putting up um, their tables, getting everything yes, set. Yes, yes. Well, I was doing the same thing. I was emptying out my boxes of the DVDs on top of it, and <laughs> there was about 400 DVDs sitting there. I'm just looking at it saying, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's just supposed to be the speakers. Well, this tall, young, strapping man, about 25 years old, I've got calluses older than he is, <laughs> um, from Charisma House, his name is Joshua Dolan. He walks up to me, and I'm looking at all these DVDs, and just as I turn to speak to him, he reached down and he picked up a particular DVD and says, um, well, I'm with Charisma House, and we'd like to publish, um, uh, we'd like to offer you a book deal. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, right, you know. Um, and I'm going, well, okay, you know, tell you what, after I'm done with put it setting up everything we'll talk about it and we didn't get to talk much that night but um, after I'd done my first presentation which happened to have been on the rapture um, um, he was talking with me behind my table and the truth of the matter was I put him to work <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he, he wanted to see a lot of presentations I kept um, Joshua there you know okay yeah you you want to buy this that's fine Pay Joshua, and I'll just go, and i was just talking to the next people. A little Tom Sawyer psychology oh, there. Oh, you got to believe it. And so, quite honestly, um, I didn't know Charisma House from Adam. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I do DVDs because that's what the people want. However, it's um, been the last five, 
seven years, something like that, people have been asking me to write a book. And Joshua just said, Charisma House sent me down here, we want you to write a book for us. And basically, you know, from there, um, I was hooked up with uh, Maureen Eha. She became my editor. And then they put together a whole team of people and, well, five months later, well, here voila, we, are. we have a book. Well, here we are. Well, that's a lot of good insider info and in how that stuff happens that we never know about as a public. But uh, the contents of this book, uh, Charisma was interested in this because they thought this was kind of a new, it's not new truth. It's not really n anything that wasn't in the Bible. It's just maybe the way that you roll it out and look at it calling it the final rapture, implying mm -hmm. that there were other raptures. Yes, exactly. There, w there were. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, well, we, we go at the um, standard belief, you know, that there's a pre, p um, mid, um, and a post-trib. Um, and, of course, now there's the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation, the new flavor of the month, as I call it, or uh -huh. it's, you know, maybe the new mid-tribulation. Pre-wrath, I think some call it. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, before we can determine if it's pre, mid, or post, we have to first understand what it is we're trying to define. Now, most Christians I've asked, I would say, would you please tell me what is a rapture? Mm -hmm. And they tell me, I mean, I don't know how many have answered this the same way. Well, that's when Jesus Christ is coming in the cloud to and take us off the earth and we'll meet him in the air and he takes us to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, yes, that's absolutely right. But I didn't ask you that question. I asked you, what is a rapture, not what is the next rapture? And, and that's what's different about this. Well, yes. Because we all assume there is one and only one. That's the, the rapture. Problem. And you're saying there is... There's more. There's a more. lot more. When we identify and define what makes a rapture a rapture? And it's three simple little things. Mm -hmm. um, God physically removes those whom he declares to be righteous outside of his impending judgment. That's it. There's God physically more. removes those whom he declares to be righteous outside, outside of, of his impending judgment. Exactly. That's it. It was such a simple concept that the apostles, the only ones now who had the divine authority to turn anything to a doctrine, they didn't even turn this into a doctrine. It was too easy, too straightforward. And it's when we try to put our two cents mm -hmm. into God's word that it gets confused. So, Doc, we are wanting to take this definition apart maybe a piece at a time. Uh, God physically removes. Let's talk about that first. Well, when we consider each of the steps, God physically removes. Well, God's going to take whoever it is. He physically removes those people to whom he declares to be righteous. See, there has to be a qualification here for the person to be under God's divine protection, and that is righteousness. Righteousness, okay. And then the third one, outside of his impending judgment. In other words, judgment is going to hit its definite. But before God knows the boom, he takes those people whom he declares to be righteous and puts them outside of his impending judgment because they are righteous. It's interesting you use the word outside. Um, that could mean any manner of ways of removal. Maybe like, well, I don't want to give away your cases, but I'm just thinking of uh, different ways God could accomplish this. I wanted to read one from Genesis 5, if I may, about Please. Enoch. And then I'll kind of let you maybe elaborate on others. But okay. uh, Genesis 5, of course, uh, many of you will be familiar with because the founder of this ministry, J.R. Church, has done a, a book on the ancient book of Enoch. And uh, this is about Enoch. It's in Genesis 5. It says, Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Enoch was purposely taken for a reason down the road. 
same thing with Elijah. You know, they were both raptured. You know, but it's gonna uh, for them their full story plays out mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation as the two witnesses. We could get into that, but it would take another show to right, do it. Right. You know, but um, uh, another example. Let's look at, um, well, the very first, if you want to call it full rapture, would have been what happened um, with Noah and the ark. We know that in chapter 6, God um, tells Mo, um, excuse me, Noah that um, the world is full of wickedness. Every thought of man is mm -hmm. wicked. I'm, you know, I'm just ashamed at, what, at my creation. And so he told um, Noah, build an ark. And I believe, it, what was it, about 100 years later, if I remember, or 120, the ark was complete. Mm -hmm. And um, Noah, um, his three sons, Ham, Shem, Japheth, Mrs. Noah, we don't know her name or the daughter's names, but they were all put in the ark with um, um, nine of all animals. And I know everyone thinks it's two by two. But we find out it was two and seven, two, two of the unclean, seven of the clean. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wasn't taught common core math, so I know two and seven still equals nine. Right. Well, okay. anyway, so, <laughs> and then the great flood happened. Now, is this a rapture by the definition we began with? God physically removes those whom he declares to be righteous outside of his judgment. Does it work, yes or no? Well, God physically removed. Noah, his sons, his daughter-in-laws, and his wife, and nine of all of every animal, and secured them in the ark. He put them in the ark. God physically removed them. Was um, Noah and his family considered righteous? Righteousness has to be there or this doesn't work. We find out in chapter 6, it's declared mm -hmm. Noah and his family were righteous before the eyes of the Lord. Right. Now, the third part, where God um, removes these people before he lowers the boom, did that happen in this case? Yes. They were secured in the ark, and if I remember, uh, they had to sit there a full week before the rains came down and they were washed away. So God physically removes those whom he declares to be righteous outside of his impending judgment, and everyone else was left to face the wrath of God. Now, probably my favorite example would be the events of um, Sodom and Gomorrah. We learn more mm. about a rapture there than um, just about any other place in the Bible. And there are hidden, if you want to call it, mysteries that are so obvious that we just read it and we pass over these mm -hmm. things. We know that two angels came down um, in um, chapter 19, I believe it is here, in, <laughs> there they are, my glasses, chapter 19, we find the events of um, the two angels going down to um, Sodom to meet up with um, Lot. Right. They just finished visiting Abram, or Abraham, there was three to begin with, one of them being, I'm convinced, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And those two angels went um, to the city of Sodom. And they told Lot that God had had it with the wickedness of this place. And to sum it up, they basically gave him the evening to gather up his son-in-laws, his family, and any of his friends. You will be out of here by sundown tomorrow. That's all you've got. And because Lot was carrying, I think he was just trying to keep grabbing as many people as he could because he knew the place was going to be destroyed, mm -hmm. that he just kept trying. Finally, the angels grabbed Lot by the hand, his wife, his daughter-in-laws, and just dragged him out of the city. And they explained to him, and this is where it gets interesting, they explained that because you're here, we can't touch the place. So what was there about Lot that prevented the hand of God from raining down judgment upon um, Sodom in the entire plains? Find out in a second. So they bring him outside of the city. Right. 
and they're told, flee to the mountains and don't look back. Uh, well, Lot is up there in age. He's in his 80s, 90s right about now. And um, he said, you know, I can't make it that far besides that. The mountains, uh, there are bad people up there. They'll kill us. Mm -hmm. And so Lot counted and said, tell you what, there's a city down the road. It's a small city. It's not too big, but it's down the road. It's called Zohar. I can make it there, you know. And the angel said another interesting thing here. He said, because thou hast declared Zohar and you're going to go live in it, it will be spared. Why? This is the big question. Why couldn't Sodom be touched when Lot was there? And why is it now Zohar can't be touched because um, Lot was going to take up residence? Let's look at the three All steps. Right. God physically removes. That's what he did with Lot and his family. But, uh, well, the angels literally had to drag him out because Lot was tarrying, but the point is they were taken out. Those whom he declares to be righteous. Now, not once in this story is it declared he's righteous mm -hmm. until you go to the New Testament where it tells us Lot was a righteous man before the Lord. God had declared him to be righteous. Now, wherever righteousness is found, God can't lower the boom. That's the problem. You see, Lot was the only righteous man in all of Sodom. And because he was still there, God couldn't um, lower the boom. So he had to remove him first. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we look at the story, we find out that Lot declares He's now got to move into Zohar. And the angel told him to paraphrase all this said, because you're moving into Zohar, it won't be touched. That tells us Zohar was on the hit list. Mm -hmm. I won't touch it now. Why? Because righteousness has now entered into Zohar. And it's only after, if you read the account, after he moved into Zohar, he made it to the city, only once he was there, did God lower the boom? And everything on that plane was completely wiped out. See, righteousness has to be, a, you know, because righteousness is active, I should say, God won't touch anything. God won't touch the place. Mm -hmm. So long as one righteous person lives here in the United States of America, God can't touch it. This is how it's spelled out in the Bible. God physically removes those who declare to be righteous outside of his impending judgment. Judgment hit only after he was removed and safely tucked away. And there are other examples of this throughout the Word of God. Um, we could go to the Ten Commandments, you know, with... Um, the plagues. When yeah, when uh, Moses confronted Pharaoh. Um, we already talked about Enoch, Elijah, and there are others. And this next one is going to happen in the exact same pattern. That's it. It's got to happen the exact same way. The next one way. being the final rapture? The final one. Hence the title of the book. It is the final one because um, after this last rapture occurs, there's the end of all Christian history ends. There's no more Christian history after that. It's turned over to a new age, a new period of time known as a tribulation period. Seven years mm -hmm is given over to the enemy. And the Lord doesn't touch uh, the earth in judgment until his righteous ones are removed. This is where um, the same pattern happens, um, but with every single one, there are uh, differences, you know. Right. Um, with this next chapter, is it going to, you know, um, we know according to the scriptures, First Thessalonians chapter 4, so on and so forth, well, um, everyone is taken off the face of the earth who are saved. And we find out that, of course, in the book of Romans, it's explained to us that we have imbued righteousness mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. 
We're righteous, not because we're, you know, we're righteous, but because he is righteous. And you use the word declared righteous, I think, in mm -hmm. your definition. Yes. It's God's declaration and he imputes the righteousness. Exactly. Yes. You know, and because we have imbued righteousness, um, and we know, according to the book of Revelation, God's wrath is poured out upon the whole mm -hmm. of the earth, not a part of it, or not just this side, no, the whole of the earth. And because we also know God can't touch a place where there is righteousness. He cannot pass judgment on any place that has righteousness in it because then it wouldn't make him a righteous judge. Right. You know, why punish me if I've done nothing wrong? So, because of this, everyone in this last and final rapture, everyone has to be removed and put somewhere else since the whole of the earth is going to be judged. And because all of the righteousness has now been removed, God can pour out his cup of wrath upon the whole of the earth. Well, let's, let's hang on to that thought and talk about where we're removed to when we go outside in this next one. But I want to offer uh, this book to you at home and tell you how you can get a copy. This won't be uh, released until October of 2017. But you can place a pre-order now. And we were talking to Doc Marquis today. It's called The Final Rapture. And it says, what we know about the end times only scratches the surface. Uh, this is, um, I think you said 234 pages or something. We'll get it. Ooh, it's 200 and something. That's 200 and something. I only anyway. wrote it. I don't know. <laughs> and we've only talked about the first section of the book in this program today. The, the past that we find of raptures in the Bible. We'll be talking in another program about current signs of the times that the book addresses, as well as the, uh, the future that we are discussing at this moment. But this is available, as always, through our Prophecy in the News bookstore at prophecyinthenews.com or calling the 800 number on your screen. And we're offering this now as a pre-order, $15.95 plus shipping and handling. So, um, boy, that's something you can look forward to. I think it would be a great uh, thing to have as this fall approaches. All right, removed from the whole earth, so judgment will happen in the tribulation. And then where are the saints, the righteous ones, removed to? Well, if we go by the scriptures, we're brought to God's heaven. We know that there's a series of events that will occur. You know, um, one will be um, the Bema Seat Judgment, which mm -hmm. born again Christians will go through. It's not the great white throne. The Bema Seat Judgment is an account of what did we do for the Lord's, uh, for the Lord's service while, you know, we were saved, you know. Yes. That's, we give an account of, you know, and oh, that's still going to be a bit of a toughie to go through, you know. But, um, and then, of course, there's the marriage um, feast where the bride and the groom, Jesus, and all his saved children come together for one big, you know, marriage supper. Beautiful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then after that, um, we prepare for war because the armies of God in chapter 19, the book of Revelation, verse 11, um, the battle of Armageddon. And then, you of course, the millennium. Right. But we are absent in all of these events. Um, of judgment. Exactly. And again, the big important thing to remember is God can't touch a place if there's righteousness. So we can't be here. This is just common sense now. Mm -hmm. We can't be here if God's going to pour out his entire wrath as the book of Revelation declares. I mean, seven, eight times at least in Revelations, it talks about the whole of the wrath of God, the cup of the wrath of God. And I mean, the earth is just being destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Again, the important part is to remember, there's no righteousness at that point. Now, will people get saved? Yes. There's no doubt of it. We find 144,000 mm -hmm. male Jewish virgins that's taught the art of evangelism and sent out throughout the world. Right. Well, you don't teach that many people how to evangelize if they're not going to get people saved. Right. right. Again, common yes. sense. Yeah. And um, well after that... Um, the final judgment, as you well know. But um, the important thing to remember, in every single example, 
did God take his children out of his judgment before, during, or after? In every example of a rapture in the Bible, he always takes his righteous people outside of his judgment before he lowers the boom. Yes. So this tells us, just by the pattern, and there is a definitive pattern that starts in the first book of the Bible, where the first rapture happens, and goes through the last book of the Bible, where the final rapture happens. That pattern, in every occurrence, God removes his kids, his righteous people, before he ever does anything. Which means, by theological terms, mm -hmm. it's a pre-tribulation, or before he judges the people. Every single, there's not an exception. Right. I mean, you've read the book. You, you wrote the foreword. Mm -hmm. God bless you for doing that. Thank you. You're welcome. And every single time, it was always before. So it's pre-tribulation. Every single time, the pattern is immutable. Like the Lord who changes not. Amen to that. Yes. So he has set that mm -hmm. up. Well, that's great. Well, we've been talking with Doc Marquis today, and we'll be doing another show on his upcoming, forthcoming uh, publication of The Final Rapture. And uh, you do make a great case, which I believe with all my heart, that the church will be raptured before the tribulation. And just to recap, we've cited uh, the story of Lot, where the angels literally take Lot and his daughters and uh, Mrs. Lot by the hand, almost drag them out yes. kicking and screaming. And they're saying, we can do nothing until we get you out of here. And it's going to be that way with the saints of God at the return of Christ as he comes in the air and raptures us out. And then the judgment of God can begin on this planet Earth. You know, we always like to end our show by saying to you, you don't have to go through these things. If you uh, know Christ, you will be a part of those who escape the coming judgment of God, not only on the earth, but in eternity in hell. And if you put that off or delay receiving him, you gamble with the most important thing you have, and that's your soul. Jesus said, what will it profit a person if they gain the whole world but lose their own soul? And Christ came and died for you so that your sin could be covered and forgiven. He was buried and rose again three days later, bringing light and immortality to life through the gospel. Eternal, everlasting life. If you'll call on his name, trust him, ask him to save you, you can be assured that he will just as he promised. And we want to encourage you to join us as we keep looking up. Thank you.